Middle Freshman Class and welcome to our presentation on HIV and STIs. The main goal of this presentation is to inform you how HIV and STIs are contracted, their effects, and how they can be prevented. The HIV and AIDS epidemic began in 1982. This video clip basically outlines our knowledge back in 1982. Scientists at the National Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta today released the results of a study which shows that the lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic of a rare form of cancer. Robert Bazell now in Atlanta. Bobby Campbell of San Francisco and Billy Walker of New York both suffer from a mysterious newly discovered disease which affects mostly homosexual men but has also been found in heterosexual men and women. The condition severely weakens the body's ability to fight disease. Many victims get a rare form of cancer called Kaposi's sarcoma. Others get an infection known as pneumocystis pneumonia. Researchers know of 413 people who have contracted the condition in the past year. One third have died and none have been cured. Death didn't scare me. It was, it was uh, living with this for a long time. That's more frightening than, uh, than death. Investigators have examined the habits of homosexuals for clues. I was in the fast lane at one time in terms of the way that I lived my life, and now I'm not. The best guess is that some infectious agent is causing it. Today, researchers here at the National Centers for Disease Control said they had found several cases where people who had been sex partners both had the condition. The scientists say this probably means they are dealing with some new, deadly, sexually transmitted disease. The investigators see this as a serious public health problem. From an epidemic point of view, uh, there have been more deaths from Kaposi's sarcoma and pneumocystis pneumonia than have occurred with all the cases of toxic shock syndrome and the Philadelphia outbreak of Legionnaire's disease combined. Researchers are now studying blood and other samples from the victims, trying to learn what is causing the disease. So far, they have had no luck. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Atlanta. What is HIV? HIV stands for the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. In your body, you have cells called CD4 cells. These CD4 cells help your immune system fight off infections and infection-related cancers. The HIV virus attacks these CD4 cells, therefore weakening your immune system. HIV and AIDS are not one and the same. Those with AIDS are infected with HIV, but people infected with HIV do not necessarily have AIDS. A person has AIDS when their T cell count falls below a measurement scale of 200, as opposed to the 500 to 1500 in a healthy person. An extremely low CD4 count means that a person's immune system is no longer healthy enough to fight off intruding viruses and bacteria. Signs that HIV may be turning into AIDS include extreme fatigue, rapid weight loss, persistent diarrhea, a high fever, and swollen glands in the neck, armpits, or groin. Even if a person doesn't have a low CD4 count, they are still classified as having AIDS if they contract any one of 26 opportunistic conditions. These are a group of illnesses that don't generally occur in people with functioning immune systems, but do show up in AIDS patients. Two of these are cancers. One, Kaposi's sarcoma, results from a tumor in the blood vessel walls and appears as disfiguring pink or purple lesions on the skin and mouth. The other cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, originates in the disease-fighting blood cells known as lymphocytes. This appears as swelling of the lymph nodes. Several opportunistic conditions that confirm an AIDS diagnosis stem from invading bacteria like tuberculosis and recurrent bacterial pneumonia. Pneumocystis carinii pneumonia is a potentially deadly inflammation of the lungs that is one of the most common infections occurring in people with HIV worldwide. Tuberculosis is the leading opportunistic infection in nations where access to medications is low. It occurs when bacteria infect the lungs and can manifest as coughing with bloody mucus. Sometimes an opportunistic infection can be fungal, like candidiasis. When candidiasis causes a white coating to form on the mouth, tongue, or vagina, this is called thrush. 
Although HIV itself is a virus, another virus can enter the body and cause an opportunistic infection. One example is cytomegalovirus, or CMV, a herpes virus that healthy adults fight easily. In people with HIV, however, the virus causes damages to the body, most notably the eyes. If untreated, CMV can lead to blindness. Other complications that lead to an AIDS diagnosis include wasting syndrome, whereby a person loses at least 10% of their body weight, and AIDS dementia complex, where nerve damage causes diminished mental functioning. These conditions and others mean that HIV has progressed to AIDS. While this is disheartening, many modern medications can keep AIDS infections from progressing indefinitely. If you have HIV, talk to your doctor about diseases that can occur following infection and the best ways to treat them. Defining STIs. How are they transmitted? How are they not transmitted? Sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections are generally acquired by sexual contact. These sexually transmitted infections may pass from person to person in blood, semen, breast milk, vaginal, or other bodily fluids. STIs and STDs can also be transmitted non-sexually in forms such as mother to infant during pregnancy or childbirth, through blood transfusions, or by sharing needles. And always remember, HIV is an STI. We'll teach you more about this later on. Here's a diagram that basically outlines the ways you can contract STIs or STDs. How can HIV transmission be prevented? To reduce your risk of contracting HIV, before you become sexually active, make sure to verify your partner's HIV status. That means you need to ask them if they've been tested or if they've ever had sex with someone who could potentially have HIV. If you choose to engage in sexual relations, make sure to educate yourself first. This means always take precautions and use a condom. Limit your total number of sexual partners and remain monogamous. Only have one partner at a time. Make sure to get tested and treated for HIV and other STIs. If you have multiple partners, it's recommended that you get tested every three to six months. Talk to your doctor about pre-exposure prophylaxis. Pre-exposure prophylaxis is basically a drug that reduces your risk of contracting HIV. Do not use drugs, do not share needles, and do not engage in sexual relations, oral, vaginal, or anal. Say no to drugs and sexual activity. This is a difficult process, and before you put yourself in a situation where sexual activity may occur, you need to have a plan. Be proactive about establishing your personal boundaries, not reactive. Here's the five key concepts that are comprehensive HIV prevention. Always use a condom. Know the HIV status of your partner or partners. Do not share needles, toothbrushes, or razors. Practice safe sex and safer sex at all times. Get tested for HIV and other STIs regularly. Symptoms of HIV. HIV includes a wide range of symptoms depending on how far the infection has progressed in an individual's body. The early stage. Within two to four weeks of being infected with HIV, individuals may feel flu-like symptoms. However, some people may not show any signs. Progression of HIV into AIDS. If HIV isn't treated properly to stun its development, HIV will progress into AIDS. There are many symptoms, including rapid weight loss, recurring fever, or night sweats, and all the others listed here. Questions you need to ask your partner before engaging in sexual relations. Are you HIV positive? Have you ever tested positive for a sexually transmitted disease? If so, were you treated? How many sex partners have you had since your last STI and HIV test? Have you had any STIs in the past six months? If you have been diagnosed with herpes or genital warts, are you having outbreaks? Are you being treated? Have you been at risk for HIV in the past six months? Do you have any objection to using a condom? Are you allergic to latex? Are you using any form of birth control? Which sexual activities have you engaged in? Have you ever shared needles or drug using equipment like snorting straws? Which STIs were you tested for? HIV and STI statistics. STIs occur the most in our age group and affects us the most. We are at highest risk for STIs. 
One in six living with HIV are unaware that they are infected. It is very common that most people do not know they are infected, and it is unknowingly passed from one person to another. Scientists may have developed gene therapy that effectively prevents AIDS, but HIV may have mutated to bypass the new defenses. God, HIV, you are such a piece of shit. Hello, viewers. I hope you're healthy and well out there. Julian here for D News. Researchers at the Scripps Research Institute believe they are on track to gene therapy that will effectively render most strains of HIV impotent. The human immunodeficiency virus works by targeting CD4 plus T cells, which are white blood cells that play a key role in your adaptive immune system. That's the part that helps you fight infections. HIV latches onto them by grabbing onto the CD4 protein on the T cell's surface and then clamping down on another receptor called CCR5. Once it's in position, it inserts its own RNA into the cell, tricking it into making more viruses. It basically turns the good guy cells into zombies. Once enough T cells are turned, the infected person's immune system is compromised and vulnerable, and they have acquired immune deficiency syndrome, or AIDS. Unfortunately, no effective vaccines have been developed yet. The problem with retroviruses like HIV is they change and adapt quickly. It's like whack-a-mole with the deadliest mole ever. And of course, there are many strands, so a vaccine against one strand probably won't be effective against others. Now though, scientists think they're onto something. Dr. Michael Farzan and other researchers say they've created a tiny strand of DNA, which, when injected into muscle tissue, stimulates the cells to synthesize a claw-shaped protein. Now, for proteins, shapes are everything, and this claw is HIV's worst nightmare. It's simple enough that even if the virus changes, it likely won't be able to shake the claw, and the protein works by latching onto the CD4 and CCR5 binding sites on the virus, leaving it adrift and unable to latch onto T cells. If it can't latch on, it can't replicate. Eventually, it's broken down and disposed of harmlessly. This isn't just some flash in a test tube, either. They've already been testing this on four monkeys by giving them the gene therapy and then injecting them with a strain of HIV for lab monkeys called the simian human immunodeficiency virus. After nearly a year, the macaques are A-OK. -okay. Now they're looking to treat infected monkeys to see if they can stop the virus from replicating further. If that's a success, they're looking to begin human trials. Now, don't worry, they won't be injecting humans with HIV to test it. They'll be giving the protein and gene to those who have HIV or those at high risk. As always, nothing is guaranteed until it happens, but it looks promising. Of course, the world being what it is, researchers in Cuba believe they've found a new strain of HIV that skips the CCR5 bonding site and goes straight for the one known as CXCR4. Normally, HIV transitions to the CXCR4 protein after years, during which time the host is relatively healthy. Once it switches, though, the descent to AIDS begins. And this new strand, which researchers believe is the combination of several other HIV subtypes, fast-tracks AIDS, leading to earlier death. It's no more infectious than its predecessors, but it might render the new treatment ineffective. So, one step forward and one step back. But keeping things on the positive tip, if scientists can keep this new strain from spreading, then we may have an effective treatment for all the other variants of HIV in the pipeline. One day, HIV may be some terrifying disease that only exists in history books and memories, like polio is to our grandparents. I hope I'm around to see that day. What you need to know before choosing to engage in sexual activities. You must be informed and prepared for all the consequences that could happen. You need to know what you're engaging in could result in. You have to speak to your healthcare provider, a parent, or a trusted adult before you choose to become sexually active. It will help you make your decision and protect yourself and your body. Proper latex condom use is not optional. You must wear a condom for all forms of sex, whether it's oral, vaginal, or anal. If you want to learn more about how to properly use a latex condom, visit this link. Even with proper condom use, you are still at risk for diseases and even getting pregnant. Without proper protection, you would be at a higher risk for the STIs and getting pregnant, but even with condoms, there is the slight risk that you can. It's not 100% guaranteed. There's no such thing as safe sex, only safer sex. In safer sex, you have to use a condom. The safest form of sex is not having sex at all and remaining abstinent. You must be educated and prepared for these serious health issues before making the choice to become sexually active. This is a very important decision and it could change the rest of your life. So be educated and protected. Influences that will affect judgment. 
Being under the influence is not a good idea. Alcohol and drugs can have a negative impact on your decision-making process, which can link you to make regrettable life choices, like having unprotected sex when you're not ready, which puts you at risk for contracting HIV or STIs. The best way to prevent contracting HIV and STIs is to not engage in sexual activities. Many people think it's okay to have sex because they think it's what their friends are doing, but it's not. As you can see here, 47% of high school students have not had sex. However, 41% of people who did did not use a condom, therefore exposing themselves to contracting HIV or STIs. People on some form of birth control may believe that they do not need to use a condom, but it is absolutely necessary to protect you from contracting this virus. Abstinence is your choice. It doesn't matter what your partner wants. It is okay to tell them no, and even if you had sex before, it's okay to stop. You need to set your limits in your relationships. You need to know when you are not ready for sex, and you need to let your partner know. You need to be confident about what you say. It's your decision. When you're saying no to your partner, you have to be serious about it. Be confident and be firm. If you're not comfortable with the situation with your partner, it's okay to leave if you don't feel safe. You need to make sure your partner is going to respect your decision. It's your choice. Here's an example of how a conversation could go between a couple or those who are in a relationship. If one partner says this, the other partner could say this. I'm clean, disease free, I don't have anything, so we can have sex without any worries. So am I, but we can still get pregnant. We can't be too safe, and not having sex is safe. If you love me, you'll do it with me. If you really love me, you'll respect my limits. I'm a virgin, and I want you to be my first. I am too, and I've decided to wait. I love you, I wouldn't hurt you. I know you don't want to hurt me, but having sex would hurt me. I'm not ready. We've been together for a long time. I can't wait forever. There's plenty of time for sex in the future. Right now I'm still learning more about you. One of our local services that helps treat for STDs and STIs is the Oakland Primary Health Services. It provides healthcare for all people. One of our programs that they provide is the antiretroviral therapy, also known as ART. While there's still no cure for HIV, ART allows those who have contracted HIV to live longer, healthier lives, while also having a less likely of a risk of transmitting HIV to others. Several medications used in ART work to provide HIV from multiplying, giving the immune system a chance to continue fighting off infections. So another local facility is the Water 14 Health Center. Under the bulletin list right here, these are some of the services that they provide, such as HIV testing and referrals, sexually transmitted disease testing and treatment and counseling, pregnancy testing and referrals, and mental health referrals. For more information, you can visit these links below. In the 1980s, there was a spike in HIV rates simply due to increased recognition for the disease. Since then, the disease occurrence has decreased until the 1990s when it leveled off. Since then, it's remained quite constant and only a recent dip has shown any variation. It's necessary to make a downward trend because there is still a significant amount of HIV diagnoses each year. Now HIV is not the only STI, there are quite a few others. For example, herpes. Herpes is another common virus. It's not as well known as HIV simply because it isn't as deadly, however, it does cause a number of different issues. It's a virus, so once you have it, you cannot really be cured. It can only be treated, and that all occurs with varying amounts of success. Gonorrhea is another STI which has a number of ill effects. There might not be symptoms when it originally is transmitted. However, in the future, it can affect your ability to have children. Antibiotics can be used to cure this disease. However, it can be gotten again and again. So it is no guarantee that once it's cured that you are safe. Chlamydia is another similar disease that is transmitted by the same methods, unsafe sex. There might not be symptoms like gonorrhea, and chlamydia can also impact your ability to have children. Syphilis is one of the oldest STIs and historically one of the most deadly. 
at first it might not be noticeable because the only symptom is a painless sore or rash that occurs and if it's in an area that isn't really noticeable it can go untreated for some time. However, as time goes on it gets progressively worse. Since it's a bacteria though, it can be cured. So as soon as symptoms are noticed, antibiotics can be used to cure it. But antibiotics, again, are no guarantee to prevent it in the future. Here's a diagram that shows the different stages of syphilis and really explains how at first, between 30 and 90 days, there are only small amounts of noticeable symptoms, possibly one sore that could just be not noticed. However, between four and 10 weeks after the initial infection, it becomes significantly more noticeable than a number of years after the infection harmed possibly irreparably. HPV is one of the most common STIs for our age group of ages 15 to 24. It is transmitted by unsafe sex, but unlike chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis, it is a virus. It cannot be cured, so once you have it, you have it. Um, antibiotics will not be able to help you. It can be prevented with immunizations, but that is before an infection takes place. If infection takes place, there are a number of complications that can develop in the future. For example, cervical cancer is a serious complication that derives from HPV. In addition, in recent years, there's been an uptick in oral cancer that is linked to HPV. In a world where cancer is almost a daily part of the news, one cancer isn't heard about enough. Oral cancers are increasing in the U.S., and as in my own case, most people know little about them. Like many, I thought that this was a cancer that impacted much older people who had used tobacco most of their lives. While that's still a problem, the fastest growing segment of the people developing oral cancers are young non-smokers. A very common virus, one responsible for the vast majority of cervical cancers, is now identified as a cause of this rapid rise in oral cancers. Thankfully, in a fast, inexpensive, and painless visual and tactile screening, a medical or dental professional can often identify early stage disease. So please, the next time you visit your dentist or your medical doctor, ask for this simple screening. Finding oral cancer in its earliest stages may save your life. HPV can cause genital warts. Genital warts are a sexually transmitted infection caused by certain strands of the human papillomavirus. They can occur for women and men on the inside of the genitals. Genital warts can cause serious pain, discomfort, and itching. They will eventually go away in time, but once in someone's bloodstream, it cannot be cured. Outbreaks will continue occurring throughout the inve infected individual's life. Genital warts can be passed on to others. So to help prevent getting genital warts, wear a condom during intercourse. Beyond the edge of a condom, there is no protection from these warts. For more information about how HIV is being used to treat cancer, click on the link here. Additionally, you can learn more information about genital warts by clicking on this link.